Hi all guys and welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about the Illinois Democrats and the new map. Because many of you have probably seen the new map come out in the recent uh, days and it looks like this apparently. This is the one proposed by the Democrats in Illinois. And uh, some of you might even also have heard about another map made by people who think that this one doesn't go far enough. Now, as 2022 is widely expected to be a wave year for the Republicans, I can see that the Democrats are afraid that the Republicans will be able to hold, well, uh, the 17th district and the 14th district and the 3rd district and flip them into the Republican column, at least for one cycle. So, since this map wasn't ugly enough, they had this other map. I was about to make a PowerPoint about it, which... Yeah, really, it's only it's only this map. This would give the Democrats a pretty strong 15 to 2 map in Illinois. And it's not just a crime against humanity, it is also something that would, to be honest, be a racial gerrymander in the same way that the North Carolina map was, until it was taken down in, in 2018. So I can't see why this... Uh, this map in Illinois shouldn't be taken down by uh, the Supreme Court in the same way that uh, the map in North Carolina was. But man, it is ugly. So I want to start by taking you all 11 years back in time to put this more into perspective. In 2010, Republicans had a very, very good year. All across the board, they won bunch of senate seats and i believe 63 house seats and in the state of illinois they did very well too they won the senate seat and they almost won the governorship came very close but did not defeat the governor pat quinn he was in office following the resignation of or the ousting of rod blagevich a democrat who had a few corruption charges against him anyway if you look at the 2010 map it was like this. So Republicans went from having 8 seats to having 11 and the majority in Illinois. This of course includes 3 quite solid Republican seats in the suburbs of Illinois, which at this time, at this point in time was still a Republican stronghold. And they won a more rural seats that were actually drawn to be Democratic but ended up flipping to their column after all. As you might expect, the Democrats did not like this. I mean, it gave the Republicans a 11 to 8 majority in seats in a democratic state. So, in 2012, they redrew the map in a very, well, in a quite despicable way. Now, this is the new map. It is, uh, well, as you might see, very gerrymandered. But even to this day... Uh, I do believe that the map which is democratic all in the south here has become a republican district so it didn't work out all that well. But what they really did was if you focus at the Chicago area they take all these districts that start in deep into Chicago and stretch out and into the suburbs. Now you can obviously not see my, uh, my mouse where I'm pointing but uh, it begins in uh, it begins in the south and it, they all stretch out in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. And it is a quite effective way to, to disenfranchise voters in the suburbs. Now, Republicans did get two districts that are currently Democratic today. At least one of them is quite suburban, the other one is actually more of a rural district, at least it was back then. But still, this basically held the Republicans to only six District. Now, Illinois did lose a district because of redistricting and population shifts. So Republicans lost five while Democrats gained four. And yes, it was a much better year for Democrats. 57 to 41% of the votes. And in 2010 it was, well, yeah, they only won the popular vote by four in 2010. So now you may see where we are getting at there. If this map wasn't bad enough, the Democrats then proceeded now to propose this map, which has only three Republican seats. And some DC Democrats are proposing this map, which is even worse. I mean, not only are the Democrats much safer here, uh, but the Demo but, uh, Republicans only have two seats. 
Now, I did not actually find this online. I actually had to borrow it from uh, Mr. Uh, Let's Talk Elections. But I mean, the map is there and you can see it with your own eyes. And it is as balanced, ugly and unbalanced as you might think. Now, many people would say that, hey, but Republicans are gerrymandering too, right? They're gerrymandering Texas. Well, yeah, they are. But look, the Texas map is not that gerrymandered. It gives the Democrats 12 safe districts to Republicans 23, which, uh, well, is not quite, it's not, it's not proportional based on population and uh, the populations of Democrats and Republicans in Texas, but it is way more proportional than uh, this ugly ass Illinois map is ever going to be. And this is much worse, in my opinion, than what the Democrats managed to do in Oregon, which was also an abomination, where they managed to make sure to get another district that was also leaning Democrat, even though it is more competitive, especially it will be in 2022. Uh, this is not a map that will please Alex Carlados, who was running in that seat. But yeah, I, uh, I think I have covered what I really wanted to talk most about today. But uh, to be honest, the maps in Pennsylvania, North Carolina and Florida have all been taken down by courts during the last decade and Republicans had to redraw them to make them more fair. And if this would not apply in the case of Democrats in Illinois, I mean, what's the point? Luckily, we have a Supreme Court that is 6 to 3 conservative and that should hopefully uh, declare this map if it is ever introduced and ever used, uh, they should declare it unconstitutional. And they should do the same with this map if they, if this was ever taken into use. Because yeah, I can agree that, that the old North Carolina map was very gerrymandered, but to be honest, this one is just as bad if not worse. And this one is actually worse. So. In the race for redrawing America and gerrymandering the 2022 districts, I would say that currently the Democrats are leading. Uh, we have yet to see, an, to see some very uh, Republican gerrymanders. I think Texas was quite kind to incumbents on both sides, even though it, of course, favors the GOP. But we will see. Some of the most exciting states, in my view, are still remaining. We have California, we have Pennsylvania. I am really looking forward to see what they come up with, as well as Florida and Wisconsin. So, uh, yeah, I will probably talk more about some uh, of these maps next time. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.